Although electric window motors rarely fail on these cars in the 70s, the rear motors on a 123 are actually like this, a 116 electric motor. They're the same thing with the same size cogs, but the front doors, they actually have a larger cog and they are not interchangeable. And you can't just take that cog off and swap it to another one. So my existing one with the large cog here for the front was failing and it was very slow and wouldn't wind the window. Not very impressive. So let's keep that in mind. I'm now, we're going to compare what I have with what I achieved by swapping it's the electric fast. motors from a 116 onto the upper gear, which you'll see right now. All right. So the point of the video is to show you how to achieve this, a far more acceptable and functional motor. Now, as always, uh, the regulators are the most likely thing to fail. So I'd actually ordered a front left regulator from um, the UK um, because I didn't want a driver's side, for example, from the US, which would be heavily worn by the opposite side to the country that you're in because you want to use a passenger side where they're really used. Now you can see this regulator part number for a front left. Um, it looks great. Uh, look, the new cost it from the classic center in 2024 is a thousand us dollars for a regulator and i think there's special order so i got this uh, for a few hundred dollars yes it's expensive but you can see it's straight it's parallel it is not bent um, so it's lovely and straight there in contrast to what you'll see in a second with the old one which you know should be replaced anyway you can see that thing is bent uh, that may have been why the motor was stressed but you can also see the shears on the moat the gears there so I'm going to take the motor off. Just take the three 10 millimeter uh, bolts out. You can see the large cog of the front one, two, three um, motor, and a smaller one, one, six would not fit there. Once again, the rear doors use a one, one, six motor. It is the same part. So, off comes the one, two, three part. Now, we're going to jump around a little bit here, but this is a slightly disassembled motor from a um, I think this is a 116. So you can see here, as I, sorry, as I dictate, there's the gear portion, which rarely fails. Now, the black casing can simply come off, and this is the 123. There's the large cog, okay? Um, you can't get those things off, and I tried a few times to get them off a 116 one to put the 123 one directly on. I couldn't achieve that. Now, to simply start off, you just friction pull down the plastic casing, and that's pretty easy. All right, and there's two straight uh, bolts on the underside that you'll see in a second, and they come off to allow you to take the motor off. Now, there is a key to this motor, which I want to warn you of to start with. Do not just pull it by the metal housing or the armature will come out um, from the bushings and then they're spring-loaded and then things just start going everywhere. So keep the armature in the housing, which you'll see how I show you to do this in just a minute. You can use either your hand to hold it in there, or in this case, I just used a screwdriver just gently to pull it down, and it uh, separates quite easily. Okay, so that's come off without separation. Now, what I'm going to try and do is just change these over. When you've pulled that down carefully, this is another one, you want to maintain this in there. And the way you do that is when you're pulling it down, keep your pressure on on the top end otherwise what happens is this comes out separately and your magnets or brushes sorry the brushes and the spring loads come out that's a little bit of a pain in the bum now there weren't too many videos on this but one of them did say suggest putting some contact cleaner all over those electrical contents i actually didn't bother doing that i was a bit dubious about that so you can see here now i need to disassemble the one two three one to swap the motor some same process um, out it comes and there we go. I'm now ready to swap over the faulty motor for the better one. So I just gave these a bit of a clean up. Now this is the little gear which um, interacts with the upper gear or the spinning shaft which interacts with the upper gear to turn it and the cog. So just giving it a bit of a clean up because all the original grease has turned into cement. Um, so I've just degreased that, then I'll put some new grease on that. I think these little things do make a big difference. And to be honest, from now on in, any time I open one of my doors up and start disassembling the, the fragments, I think this is an appropriate service item after 45 years. 
So you can see it's all spinning freely. Uh, that's beyond my pay grade to understand these sorts of things as a hobbyist. So I'm just going to grease it up. So nothing too exciting here. Now, to line these up, um, actually not overly complicated. You don't even need to have, well actually you would want the casing on the upper portion off, which is just three flatheads. You're trying to line up that shaft with a little hole or groove in that metal circular upper piece. Um, just give it a bit of a wiggle. Sometimes you need a screwdriver to align that upper ball segment. And then secure it down the bottom again with the two flatheads. Then we're going to put a little cap on that uh, groove retainer at the top. Yep, there's a little black plastic cap which you can pop over that. Stolen that from one of the other ones. Um, and then the casing can go back on. So just grease up everything you can, um, get rid of the old crud and put some new grease in there because it, again, it just really has set into some very firm gelatinous mass in there. Now, having done this now, um, I'm resealing the one with the one, two, three cog. There's just three flathead screws to go on there. Uh, but nothing complicated at this point. And now I just popped a shorter sheath. The wiring length was a tad different on this one. I'm not sure what the significance of that was. And there's the two wires which will determine the polarity of the motor. Um, if you get them around the wrong way, up is down and down is up. Um, so just give it a little bit of a clean up uh, before pushing that case fully down. And you can have a listen now to the replace motor. Good. Interesting to see the cogs not spinning through the uh, securing screw holes. So it just sounds infinitely better. So I've now attached this to the um, purchased regulator, which I've greased up as well. Um, I'm sure they degreased the hell out of it to make it look good for sale, but I've, de I've greased it up. Um, I've then attached the wiring loom up, and you can actually see now the motor is turning, um, and after putting under a bit of tension, the regulator arm is swinging as appropriate, nice and smoothly. And that's now ready to go back in the car. Now, getting this in the car, sometimes you want to um, use the motor outside the car to get the arm to fit in. Um, it'll make sense when you get there. There's a the little bushing which slides up the channel, grease up the channel. Um, you've got three 10 millimeter nuts to put on to hold on the regulator onto the frame. And you can see the alignment there for the front left side. Um, you also have the two 10 millimeters for the regulator arm. The right side sort of slides in there and then you bolt them up. I'm not sure of the significance of the left side there, um, which has a little bit of play in it. Um, then there's two 10 millimeter bolts to put in the front and rear of the regulator. Now the window frame will come down and sit in those channels as you can see there on the front and on the rear. And by using the power of the motor, you can lift that up a little bit so you actually get the proper access. Um, you do want the window probably two thirds down. Um, so you can see that's now been pushed up, electronically driven up a little bit to line it up. And that's all getting tightened up with the assumption of it working. So for the test now, everything's working nicely, up and down, um, reasonably well, um, a lot quieter, and it doesn't stall halfway up. So for your own knowledge, a 116 motor can be used on a 123 front if you don't have another 123 because the cogs are unique.